to understand the processes that occurs along a convergent boundary between an oceanic and continental crust, let's try to have this experiment. We'll be needing half cup of water, two pieces of foam, and a flat surface. Deep half of the length of one of the foam into the water. Place it on the flat surface at least 2 cm away from the other foam. Position the deep part of the foam in the middle part of the setup. Then, slowly push 4 cm inward each outer ends of the foam until the overlap. The foam represents an oceanic crust and a continental crust. They are converging. The continental crust curves upward on top of the oceanic crust due to its lesser density. The oceanic crust, due to its greater density, stays below. Analyze this model. When an oceanic crust converges with a continental crust, a crack between the crust underwater, called trench, is formed. Since the oceanic crust has greater mass due to the presence of water on it, so its density also is greater. This causes it to die down or subduct under the overriding plate, the continental plate. Subduction is the process by which a plate dives under the less dense plate. At the mantle, the leading edge of the subducting plate melts or becomes fluid. It turns into a hot molten material, which we call magma. Due to the heat in the mantle, the magma builds up a pressure that enables it to push the ground above it. The column of rising magma is called a mantle plumb. When there is a volcanic activity, such as an eruption, the ground moves, and so an earthquake is felt. Because subduction continues, a group of volcanoes called volcanic art is formed at the surface of the continental crust along the boundary where the two crusts converge. The movement of the ground may cause a disturbance in the ocean. The water may flip or kick upward to a few meters high. This is what we call tsunamis, or a Japanese term for harbor wave. This event is very dangerous when it moves inland, destroying lives and properties. Let us explain the processes that occur along a convergent boundary between two oceanic crusts. For this experiment, we will be needing rectangular basin or food tray half filled with water, two pieces of foam, and a flat surface. Submerge the two foams into the basin containing water. Arrange them at least two centimeters away from each other. Slowly push four centimeters inward each outer ends of the foam and observe what happens. The model below shows two crusts underwater, so they are both oceanic crusts. You must have noticed that there is a boundary line between the crusts, a trench. It is a crack on the crust which is underwater. The convergence of two shiny crusts results in some similar events compared to the first type of convergence. Tsunamis may be formed. Earthquakes may happen. There is also subduction because one plate is denser than the other. The front part of the subducting plate becomes magma upon reaching the mantle. Then, it builds up pressure due to heat pushes the crust above it, forming a volcano. This is a continuous process. Since the plates are moving, the volcano will move with the plate. It becomes instinct when it's no longer above the magma deposit in the mantle. A new volcano will then be formed. This series of volcanoes is called volcanic island art since it is surrounded by water. This explains why the Philippines is mostly loaded with volcanoes. The different islands were believed to have originated from the convergence of two oceanic crusts. Converging continental crusts or plates results in a collision zone which could cause 
shallow earthquakes. At that place, a crop called fault is formed. This type of convergence will cause no subduction since the two plates have the same densities. There will be no volcanoes form, no tsunamis. The convergence will result in a group of highland forms that we call mountain ranges. Divergent plate boundaries mostly happen under the oceans. As plate pulls away from each other, a vertical space that may extend deep down into the lowest layer of the crust is created. It is a reef valley. The force of separation creates a tension zone. A shallow earthquake may happen with this plate movement. Plate divergence is believed to be a slow continuous process. As the plates move away, the gap between them increases. While this happens, materials from the mantle may rise and fill up the gap. These materials pile up near the tension zone forming mountain-like structures called oceanic ridge. But new materials from the mantle may push the old ones. The filled up space between the plates becomes a new seafloor. This process is known as seafloor spreading. This third type of plate boundary is mostly found in oceans, but there are few that traverse through the continental crust. This is characterized by plates moving horizontally against each other, producing a crack called fault on the ground. The force the plates exert can break the rock and other materials under the ground. The shaking usually ends up abruptly. This is why it brings about strong earthquakes. The fault could swallow humans, cars, and buildings. Margiodorus water from under the ground may spring up from the fault. Most faults do not totally close when the shaking ceases since the adjoining edges have already moved farther from each other. And that's the end of our video tutorial. I hope you have learned something and always remember to stay at home and keep safe.